So here is the MathCAD file <coughs> for our freehead timber pile in a cohesive soil. And the first portion is an introduction. Now we've gone over the introduction earlier today, but I'll say it again. We're looking at a free headed pile with no restriction against head rotation. And we might be looking at a short head, a uh, short free pile or a long pile, depending on the resistance you're encountering. So for the purposes of the calculation, we're assuming it's installed in cohesive soil, having a constant undrained shear strength with its depth. Uh, we assume that part of the top layer provides no lateral resistance down the length of the pile. <clears throat> the soil reactions are split into three, resulting in three reactions, and the third reaction <coughs> resists the applied horizontal force and they generate the shear forces for the bending moment shown in the diagram below. This one, as we've seen before, is for short piles. So let's put in our loads. We've got some design factored vertical load and design factored horizontal load. And we're applying that in effective height of two meters, which gives us an applied moment there of uh, five uh, kilonewton meters. So we're looking at timber section. So the timber section is designed in accordance with NZS 3603. We're taking the pile diameter as 250 mil diameter and the bending strength is 38, taken from table four of the code. We've got some parameters which are related to uh, timber pole piles and we're using K1 and K8 as one and K20 and K21 as 0.85. That gives us an ultimate bending moment capacity for the pile shaft of 42 kilonewton meters. So therefore we have uh, plenty of space in our factor of safety. So that's a structural design, nice and simple. Let's look at the geotechnical pile design. And so we need to put in our soil parameters. First of all, the short term. And we're looking at an undrained shear strength SU of 25 kPa. We're using strength reduction factor for our geotechnical analysis of 0.5. We've got unit weights for soil and dry, and we can work out what the buoyant weight is by deducting the unit weight of water. We're saying that our depth of a water table is at one and a half meters down. For the long term effective stress analysis, we've got an effective stress cohesion of 2 kPa, so not huge. And we've got an effective shearing angle resistance angle of 28 degrees. So from B1VM4, we can work out what the ultimate lateral strength of the short freehead pile is. Um, so we can start with uh, an assumed length of 2.5. Okay, and that gives us a lateral resistance by using that formula of 18 kilonewtons, which has got a factor of safety of over three and a half. You might want to reduce the length of the pile in that case, but if we carry on, so the depth to the maximum moment in the pile shaft is the 0.69, and the maximum moment in the pile shaft due to that horizontal resistance is 45. Uh, we've already said that the moment capacity of the pile shaft is 42. So therefore, your ultimate capacity of your pile is lower than the capacity of that's induced by a horizontal resistance. So we have a little flag saying you better check this as a long pile. Uh, you can derive the applied moment in the pile shaft due to your applied load H, which gives you 6.4 kilonewton meters which gives you a geotechnical design ratio of 3.2, which seems okay as a long pile. The lateral strength of a long free head pile is derived from that formula given in B1VM4 clause 4.3.2a, and that works out as 16.9 kilonewtons, and that tells me it's okay. Now we look at the vertical load capacity. 
look at the short term first. And again, we work out what the total stress is at the base of the pile. That gives us the undrained base resistance VBU as a mere 12 kilonewtons. You might want to take some uh, shaft resistance. So the undrained adhesion of the shaft interface is worked out from the adhesion factor multiplied by a um, uh, undrained shear strength. So it gives you 20 kPa. That's applied around the circumference of the pile, which gives us a shaft resistance of 39 kilonewtons, which gives us a vertical pile strength of 51. So our vertical capacity ratio is 1.18. So that's just about good enough. So that's the short term. Let's have a look at the long term. So long term, we're looking at drained and effective stress parameters. Work out what the effective vertical stress is. Q dash is 33.95 kPa. We take our bearing strength factors. And again, this is straight out of figure four and figure three from B1 VM4. And we work out what the drained base resistance of the pile is. And that comes out as 51 kilonewtons. We're assuming the drain angle of shear resistance at the shaft interface delta is 21 degrees, simply by taking 75% uh, of the angle of shearing resistance. We've got a KS factor which varies depending on the density of the soil you're in and the type of pile you're using. So KS equal to 2 uh, for a medium dense. And so our shaft resistance of the pile is at 25.6. The pile compression capacity long term, therefore, is 77. And the design compression capacity in the long term is 38. So we still have a factor of safety of over 1 at 1.76. That's simple.